Men commit suicide 3.5 times more than women, but they're the least likely to seek professional help. Find out why from an expert who's also a Morehouse man, coming up. I've been in practice for about 25 years now, and uh, uh, initially in Chicago in uh, the last 17, 18 years here um, in Atlanta. And when I set up my practice in, in, in Atlanta, um, the work I do is primarily with African American males. And uh, the, the experience of African American people generally, and I think young black males in particular, is, is one that is fraught with uh, marginalization, exploitation, and, and oppression. And a, a coma is a, a dinkra word. It, it has its origins um, in Ghana. Hmm. And um, the coma, the symbol for a coma is actually a heart. Um, and, you know, we understand the heart to, to mean love. Um, but in the adinkra system, uh, a coma means patience and endurance. And the, the path to healing, oftentimes, for the young brothers I work with and their families, is often a pa path that requires significant patience and that they have to work through and endure um, some of the pain and traumas that were referenced in, in the piece that you let out with. And, and, and so it's a reminder to me um, that I also have to be patient and endure with as I partner with the young people that I work with and their families. Wow. It's interesting that you brought up about uh, the males. You work with young black males, yes. black males in general. Mm -hmm. As a black male yourself, why did you decide to venture into an area where black men are underrepresented in terms of mental health? Sure. So, you know, that, that wasn't purposeful. That, that wasn't, there wasn't like, well, you know, there's a, a, you know, a need for black men to do this work. Um, my own personal uh, story with uh, applied psychology began uh, when I was 13 or 14 years old, and I was sitting on the couch with my mother of Dr. Linda Hatton. Uh, I was caught up, mixed up, and doing the most as a young man, and uh, really was on a pathway. We talked about the, the schools, the, the prison pipeline. I was in first class. Hmm. Um, and, and, and so this sister, Dr. Hatton, uh, really helped me um, and, and helped my, my mom help me uh, find another path. Um, and and, and she, she was mentoring me then about what I do now. Um, when I graduated, so that's 13 or 14, I'm in eighth grade at that point. But when I graduated from high school, I kind of turned some things around in terms of, of kind of what I was doing behaviorally, et cetera. I remember her sending me a graduation card. So this is three or four years after I, I, I've stopped working with her. Um, but her investment in, in me as, as a young man um, meant a lot. And, and where I grew up in public housing, you didn't go see psychologists, you didn't go see psychiatrists, you know, it, it wasn't what you did. And um, the progressive uh, mother that I had was, I'm going anywhere I have to go to get help for my son. And so um, when I got to college, you know, uh, my delusions of playing NFL football aside, um, you know, I, I went through a couple of three majors until I found myself in a black psychology course where it, it talked about the experience of black and African people from a positive perspective and not a negative one, and that there was a psychology that spoke to the unique experiences of African Americans, and, and, and that it was a healing psychology, it was a liberating psychology. Um, and that, that spoke to me, and it's, it, it's been a joy ride um, in the 20 some odd years since then.